The following BLTV program is brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Please enjoy. Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law, and today we're going to explain what attorney-client privilege protects. First, we're going to talk about what attorney-client privilege is, and then we're going to talk about two different types of attorney-client privilege. So first, let's talk about what attorney-client privilege is. So when parties are engaged in litigation, they'll often conduct discovery. And discovery is basically requests for documents or answers to questions. It can be depositions, that's called oral discovery. And this discovery is basically uh, used for the purpose of getting information that the other side has to prepare for trial. Now generally, unless the party that is supposed to produce the information and, and documents has a valid objection to the production, they have to provide everything they have that's responsive to the question. But one objection that they can raise is that the documents or information that is requested is privileged by attorney-client privilege. So they don't have to basically sub basically produce these documents and, and information if it's covered by attorney-client privilege. They can object and raise attorney-client privilege as the reason for objecting to the production of this information. So there are two types of information and documents that are privileged by attorney-client privilege. Uh, one is privileged communications between the attorney and the client, and the other is attorney work product in preparation for trial. So we'll talk about each and what qualifies as each one. So first let's talk about privileged communications between the attorney and the client. There are basically four criteria that are required to be true in order for a communication to be privileged uh, based on attorney-client privilege. One is the existence of an attorney-client relationship. This doesn't necessarily require a written retention agreement, but the client has to have communicated confidential information to the attorney for the purpose of seek, seeking legal advice. If the client does that, then an attorney-client relationship exists for the purpose of attorney-client privilege. The second criteria for privileged communication is that information must have been exchanged in confidence. The privileged information must have. Uh, basically, this means that the information was communicated to the attorney with the understanding that the attorney wasn't to share it with others. The third criteria is that the communication must have been made while the attorney was acting in his or her legal capacity. And this is basically just the, the communication must have been made for the purpose of seeking legal advice not in casual conversation at a cocktail party. And fourth, the communication must must remain confidential, meaning that neither party can disclose it to a third party between the time it was made and the time that the privilege is asserted. Once the information is disclosed to a third party, the privilege is generally waived. So if those four things are true, the communication between the client and, and attorney, whether it's verbal or an email or a letter, um, it, the privilege applies and the parties don't have to disclose that communication in discovery. The other type of protected information under attorney-client privilege is attorney work product. And this basically protects notes of the attorney that are made in preparation for trial or in connection with litigation. So two things have to be true in order for these notes uh, or work product to be protected. One is that the work product must have been prepared in, for the purpose of litigation or trial. The second is that the work product must consist of theories, mental impression, uh, mental impressions, strategy, or litigation plans of the attorney, not the underlying facts of the case. So you can't basically hide facts by calling it attorney work product, but the attorney's strategy or thoughts about the case are attorney work product, and the, the attorney doesn't have to produce them uh, in discovery. They can raise the attorney-client privilege. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments section below this post at learn-about-law.com or below, our, below the YouTube video on our YouTube station. If you found this helpful, we would love it if you subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, and SoundCloud to find out the topics that we publish every day. We do an article and a video, different topics every day. Uh, if you need some help, give us a call at 630-324-6666. The 630-324-6666. We have offices all around Chicago land for your convenience. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizeyourbusiness.com. And visit Making Real Estate Fun for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.